Hello, and thank you for joining me for some more D24 engine teardown. Today we're going to be taking off the injection pump, talking upgrades and deletes. But first you're going to want to get the thing off. Take the gear off by sticking something in the timing hole. That's what I did just there. And I believe it's a 17 to take off. 17 or 19. And here I am trying to use that absolutely useless puller. Um, it's not going to work, but you can have a laugh at my expense. Just use a pry bar. Probably not the greatest thing for the pump, but... Bing! There you go, idiot. And now it's time to actually get the pump off. I managed to do it off screen, took a bit of prying. But you're going to want a 6mm Allen key to get the fastener that's between the pump and the head. There we go, I managed to get it off. It's a good idea to take the pump off, it'll make your life a lot easier. There's some pretty simple quality of life upgrades you could do on it. And it'd be nice to take it to a shop. Just maybe get a quote, see what it would take to get a health check on it. And if it's too much, I'll just do it myself. And destroy it, probably. They're pretty, uh, pretty complicated little things. There's a lot of benefits to having a diesel engine. You could run it a lot leaner. You can make a lot more torque, get better gas mileage. But your big downside is this injection pump. Tough to service, very complicated, and extremely expensive to replace. Now these bolts on the other side, they're 13s. Just going to do it the hard way with an end wrench. One more, three total bolts in the front, and there's one in the back too. Now this 13 bolt has a maybe 15 nut on the side, on the other side of it. I got lucky. It turned out that it, it stuck on there, so I didn't need to. Nice. So I didn't need to actually like hold it. It just stayed nice and stuck, and I could just take off the 13. get the socket made. There we go. And after that it just takes a bit of finagling. You may need to partially disassemble the big bracket that that mounts to otherwise it kind of gets in the way either that or you could take off the mount but because I already had this um, this piece slightly disassembled I was able to just take it out And at this point, it's all out. Like I said, it just takes a bit of finagling. You can sort of see right under the vacuum pump, that was the last mount, and that's where it's stuck on.
Like I said, though, this is a pretty expensive part, so I'm just being careful. I don't want it to go flying across the room or drop it or anything. Ta-da! And now here we go. I'm just taking that big old... I don't know. <laughs> the big old barrel off the top. It basically just has linkages that go to all sorts of stuff. Things like idle control, the cruise control, the throttle. It's got like three total inputs, which I won't need, so off it comes. That is a 10 mil. And now I'm just taking off the little plastic ball joint. That's uh, that's pretty delicate, so be careful. I'm almost certain that those are going to be pretty expensive and expensive or rare. So I'm just going to take it off very slowly. It's off, but just kind of stuck now. The only thing that's holding it on is the actual idle control slash timing advance linkage. Which I'm now just realizing. Huh. Pretty soon I'm going to get the bright idea to take it apart at the linkage, which is probably what you definitely don't want to do. Hmm. That's just a 10 millimeter, but don't do it because that range of motion that the bar has is way less than the actual idle control itself. So the second that pops off and the spring goes bing... Ding. There you go. Now my timing advance is all messed up. Luckily, I have the dial indicator to fix that right up, but I just made a bit more work for myself. So here we go. This is our pump that we've got to work with. And this is our 10 digit model number. You punch that in online. You'll get all kinds of information, what what kind of pump you're dealing with, VE pump, P pump, things like that. And when I type that in, you know, go to a parts catalog from diesel catalog. And here you can see that oh, the injection pump is a pretty ruthlessly complicated little machine. And up here, you can see there's our um, advance, cold start advance. So that's nice. We know we're dealing with the right one. Now let's talk upgrades. Here's our pump. I actually have it mirrored just to sort of explain things a little bit better. And here's our diagram that we're going to use to explain some stuff. This is pretty much exactly what I want to do. And I'll compare them side by side. So here we go. Let's start with the things that I could show on this end. Right here we have the mechanical fuel shutoff. And here's our cutaway. And effectively what we have here is just imagine this bar that I'm hovering over is the throttle. You pull it this way to the left and you're increasing speed. You pull it to the right and you're decreasing. So right here what I'm hovering, hovering over right now is your idle spring. That pushes us to the left and it'll control your idle. What I'm hovering over right now is your fuel or smoke screw it'll set your minimum idle. This right here is your throttle cable and on it it's got a spring. So you pull that, it'll pull your throttle cable and give you more fuel. And right here you have a governor. As you increase speed, the governor will try to push back. And there's a little balancing act between the spring governor and the centrifugal governor and that'll set your maximum RPM. So the first upgrade we might want to do is take out the spring governor 
and give it a different spring, make it a little bit stiffer, get a little bit higher RPM out of it. Now the next thing we're going to do, unfortunately, I would like to keep that mechanical fuel shut off, but it's probably not going to happen. But I would like to have what's shown in blue here, this boost aneroid. That can be found pretty easily. And what that does is, you can see in deep blue here, is your charge pressure, effectively boost pressure, will push down on this needle, which goes on this little pivot and that will release and give you more fuel. So to compensate for that, we're gonna need a little bit more fuel on the fuel screw because as you get more boost, it lets off. Now I'm still not sure if I'm going to turbo this car or not, but if you look at the aneroid, you really have options for both. You have the charge pressure in deep blue, and then you have atmospheric pressure in lighter blue. But in things like the Volkswagen 16D, some of the newer ones, the charge pressure is actually the atmospheric pressure, and the atmospheric pressure is ran off of a vacuum. And even though I have a naturally aspirated car, it makes vacuum. So that can give us our extra fuel under throttle. And that would be pretty nice. It wouldn't really be a power thing. It would probably mostly be a smoother driving experience and power delivery. And that's really about all the upgrades that can be shown from this direction. Let's hop over to the next area. All right, here we have basically our timing advanced stuff. Right here is our cold start timing advance and idle control. It's hooked up to this big heating element that's heated off of the coolant. And as it heats up, it lets this arm swing to the left and it'll allow us to run at a decreased idle and in the actual pump think of this um cam roller ring it's just this is just an advance you see right here if, when you turn it counterclockwise you're advancing the timing so what you have here with that timing lever is basically a little cam that'll push on this barrel and shove it in the advance direction as that heating element heats up and lets the bar slack off to the left. Uh, I'd really like to delete this, but I don't think I can because this piece doesn't usually have a block off plate in other valves. It'll be a just empty casting. So I don't think I'd be able to block it off. It might be staying. And down here we have another form of timing advance. This one is a little bit more complicated. Here is what it looks like usually on this side. It's just a fuel pressure switch. So as you increase the fuel pressure, the fuel pressure will come over here and it'll grab this lever and plunger and try to shove it in the advance direction. Now that's just what it's like normally. Over here, we have this additional element on it and this is also a heating element, but this is powered electrically. So it'll heat up a little element and that'll open a tiny valve and that'll allow pressure from up here at the end of the line to come down here and assist in moving the plunger. So it'll make it go to the advance easier. And the mechanical cam one, that sort of supersedes it. That's a hard mechanical stop that'll be shoving the cam. This one is more like advance under load because it'll increase the amount of pressure that comes on the spring as the engine is increasing throttle. And I'd, I'd really like to delete both of these. I can definitely delete the electric one, which is good because I'm, I'm not gonna bother with a very complicated swamp, I, I, swamp, excuse me, swap. I want as minimal wires as possible. And I'm not gonna bother trying to figure out how to hook that up to a switch and you know, advance it for the right amount of time and unhook it. No way. I'm just going to take it out. The mechanical one might be stuck with it. And here's what I'd like to end up with. This is a 4BT pump, essentially. And you could see what I was talking about with this casting. Down here, where the electric advance is, it has a cover, inspection plate, whatever you want to call it. And you can easily fish that off of any old pump and use it to plug it all up. But over here, 
you can see it's an empty casting. I don't know if I could get another plate to plug it up. It's probably the same bolt pattern as this one, but I believe there's like an O-ring land, and it might not seal up there. But we'll see. And like I said, ideally, I'd like to have a mechanical shutoff. I don't think I'll find one. You can see that it's built into this upper assembly right here. And it doesn't really matter, because right here is our fuel shutoff solenoid. And all you would need to run this motor normally is just 12 volts to that. And that's not a really hard thing to manage. But it is cool to just be able to say that you could run it all entirely mechanically. And I'm, I'm pretty limited to whatever I could probably bum or buy off of Diesel Dave. And here is our aneroid. That would be controlling our boost or vacuum fueling. Right there, that's the, uh, the vacuum side of it. And up there is the boost side. And that's all well and good. We'll see what we can get away with. At the very least, I'm going to try to reseal it. These um, pumps, they tend to start leaking around the rotating parts. So things like the throttle and this main shaft, that will be our problem. A uh, reseal kit is pretty cheap. What kind of upgrades and deletes I get to do? Hey, that's anybody's guess, but we'll go for this. We'll be shooting for what I'm showing here with this 4BT. And if not, well, we'll just have to live with it.